Welcome to Better Bachelor. My name is Joker with a face radio and a voice for print. Um, this isn't normally the type of story I cover on this channel, um, but I, you know, being a, a good bachelor is being a well-informed, smart man. So you know what the hell's going on. And apparently um, this is just something that no one in the mainstream news wants to talk about. As a matter of fact, they arrested a reporter, um, a national news reporter that was trying to report on this. I guess he wasn't following the narrative or something. Um, but this is something you guys need to know about um, for a couple of reasons. Number one, 75,000 farms in the Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Kentucky areas are being affected. Um, and on top of that, the government's not telling you what the hell's going on. So here we are. Um, I'm, I'm going to help try to spread this news so you guys can be aware of it. Uh, before I jump into that, make sure to head over, uh, if you go to my, my page here on YouTube, uh, to Better Bachelor. Um, I've got the store open now and you can see the the sweatshirt with my little logo on here, the double Bs and same thing for my hat. Um, I, I, I ordered it and I've been testing it now for about a month and the stitching's good. Uh, the, the print's good. I've put it through a couple of washes. That's good, warm, soft sweatshirts and t-shirts and everything. And uh, they come in a variety of different colors and assortments. So you can click on here and go to the store and uh, check it out if you would like some cool merchandise and to support the channel. Um, so this is from Blaze Media. And uh, again, no mainstream has really touched this stuff. But again, I want you guys to know what's going on. Um, from Blaze Media News, uh, we basically nuked a town. Animals dying in Ohio after train derailment and controlled release of toxic chemicals. They say freight train that derailed February 3rd in East Palestine, Ohio, may not have exploded outright as some had feared, but still managed to expel various toxic chemicals. Uh, we'll talk about that more in another in another segment here in just a second. While officials, officials have suggested the deadly chemicals in the smoke that darken the sky over the village do not pose a threat to human beings, uh, some locals are not convinced, particularly as their animals have taken ill and in uh, several cases perished. They say, what are the details? A uh, uh, northern, southern, Norfolk southern train was carrying 141 loaded cars, nine empty cars, three locomotives, and around 50 cars went off the tracks. Um, some of those were tankers, and those tankers had chemicals in them. The chemicals are such as vinyl chloride, hydrogen chloride, and phosgene. Now, um, some of the people that were talking, a couple chemists have talked on this fact, and they said that vinyl chloride when it is burned, gives off um, hydrogen chloride and sulfuric acid or hydro hydrogen acid. I, I think that's what they called it. I have that information here in a second. Uh, that there's uh, ethyl alkyl, uh, acrylic, ac acrylic, carcinogens, other things. Like it's, it's a mess. And, and I've got videos and we're going to go down into it. This is a, a chemist. If any of you are chemists, if any of you live in the Ohio area, please post down below this, give us a little bit more information on what's going on because right now, none of the mainstream outlets are talking about it and you're getting individuals having to come out and talk about this and report on it because there's the government, because this makes them look incompetent, stupid, and it's very dangerous. They've just decided, well, we're not gonna talk about this. Like we'll just pretend like it's gonna go away. But I think we've got a lot of problems coming up here uh, with food production animals, again, more animals getting poisoned, more food, uh, having problems coming out. I'm going to let this guy explain. Uh, this is uh, from Mr. Kraken. Um, I, I find this stuff on, on Twitter. If you're not on Twitter, I'd suggest signing up today. Um, you can follow me at Bachelor Joker. This is where I'm getting this stuff. Twitter, since Elon got rid of all the, um, all the censorship or most of it, he's still working on it. This is where you're going to find the most breaking news. I'm going to let, that, let this guy explain what's going on with the chemicals. This hasn't been getting a lot of coverage, and the coverage that it has been getting hasn't been very good. So let's talk about the trail derailment in East Palestine, Ohio. East Palestine's about an hour north of Pittsburgh, almost halfway to Cleveland. Norfolk Southern has a rail line that goes right through town, and this derailment happened right on the edge outside of town on the border of PA and Ohio. Of the cars that crashed, five of them contained vinyl chloride. It's a monomer used to make PVC. Let me pause it here for a second. I wish people would stop putting music over TikTok. I think this counts as classical music, so I don't think they'll give me a hard time for it. Um, but yeah, it's it, it's chemical made to uh, used for PVC. And from what I've gathered so far, there's about 100,000 
gallons of the stuff or 1 million pounds of the liquid that has been burnt off. Some of the reporting on this has gotten vinyl chloride confused with polyvinyl chloride, the polymer made out of vinyl chloride. Now, the reason that this distinction is really important is vinyl chloride is very hazardous and very flammable. Polyvinyl chloride is a plastic that's used in like everything. The other thing about vinyl chloride is that it boils at eight degrees Fahrenheit. So it's shipped in its liquid form, meaning that when these trains crashed and these started leaking, they weren't just leaking liquid, but they were spewing boiling gas. The other update that I've read on this, and he may say it in this video, is that because of the boiling and, and which, which cre changes the liquid into vapor, they were afraid the containers were going to explode and send shrapnel and you know, stuff raining down all over the place. So what they did is they basically opened the containers and then it either caught on fire or they lit it on fire, one of the two. That's not exactly clear yet. So vinyl chloride is really toxic. OSHA has the permissible limit of how much you can be exposed to it during an eight hour shift as a one PPM part per million average over eight hours. So prior to this, the biggest spill of this chemical was in New Jersey, where one train car and about 23,000 gallons of vinyl chloride were spilled, but it didn't catch on fire. Okay, so the previous one had, and again, if you, I know you wanna hear this, but I gotta stop it just in case YouTube's, you know, algorithm keeps picking up the music. 23,000 gallons previously, but it didn't catch on fire. Yes, it can soak into the ground and, and do bad things, um, but, in this case, it's more than four times more liquid. Um, and it's basically being vaporized and then it's landing in waterways and on farms and it's blowing east, but then the rivers are bringing it back west down basically the Ohio basin until it meets up with the Mississippi and then heads out into the Gulf of, uh, of um, Mexico, like, you know, right, right south of Louisiana. Now, this crash in Ohio has five train cars. These kinds of tanker cars can carry between 25 and 33,000 gallons. Let's call it 250 to 250,000 pounds of vinyl chloride. They, they've, like I said, they, they've actually estimated it closer to 1 million pounds. Oh, no, he says that's per train car, right? 250,000 pounds per train car times four or five cars. Yeah, okay. That's per train car, five train cars. There's maybe a million pounds of this toxic chemical spilling into the ground and also boiling off into the air. But then it caught on fire. I think this is where the reporting is really bad because no one is mentioning what the byproduct of vinyl chloride burning is. Of the many byproducts of burning vinyl chloride, one of them is hydrogen chloride. Hydrogen chloride is really unstable and latches onto water, like just water vapor in the atmosphere. That turns it into literal acid rain. And there are pictures now floating around of people's cars. Uh, one guy posted that it, his car is about like his home and his car and all his stuff. He's about 10 miles away from where this happened. And he's east of it. He's about 10 miles away. And he has p pitting on the paint of his car. That he went out and it looked like there was salt, like from a salty road in the wintertime, like salt or dust all over his car. And he tried washing it and the paint is actually pitted 10 miles away. Yet they're already telling people that it's safe to drink the water and, and things are not that badly contaminated in the town. So this is something definitely to, to worry about. And that turns into hydrochloric acid. So right now, government officials, officials from the railroad, both the governor of Pennsylvania and Ohio are calling burning off the million pounds of this stuff a success but not mentioning that it means that we have hundreds of thousands of pounds of acid in the air, potentially. Now, ever since engineering school, I've studied a lot of industrial accidents. I just find it really fascinating and organizations like the Chemical Safety Board, NTSB and OSHA all have like really good reports available to the public. I think as a designer, it's really good to learn about mistakes. When looking at these kinds of industrial disasters across time, there are a couple things that are pretty universal across all of them. One, the responsible party in this case, Norfolk Southern Railway, always plays down the reality of the situation. Politicians also just repeat the same lines and then news outlets just repeat the same. So all we're hearing is the responsible party's word. Which basically means, of course, 
that uh, if they say nothing's wrong and then the politicians say, oh, okay, well, we'll let everybody know nothing's wrong. And then they tell the news, nothing's wrong. All you're going to hear is nothing is wrong. Um, here's the, I'm going to mute this. Uh, I, I think it's just music. Massive train derailed. Yeah, it, it, it's music. This is the, the train and the fire and the smoke, everything billowing off of this. And this is turning into basically acid, like he said. And uh, the, cl the, the gentleman in this audio clip, I'm, like I said, I'm just muting it because of the cringe music. Um, he said, these are not clouds. Like, let me rewind it. So if you, if you see this picture here, it was relatively a clear day. Um, same thing, I think, if you go here to this burn off, like it was, like it's a little overcast. It's a little overcast, but like this guy says right here, He's like, these dark clouds, these are not storm clouds. He's like, those black clouds are all the chemicals. And he said, you, it smells like chlorine water. Like it smells like chlorine. And of course, he's literally raging. Uh, this is a picture of it from the sky. Someone took from an airplane, like a jet. You can see how big that plume is. And it is above the cloud line. Um, they arrested this reporter. I've got more on this story. Um, because I guess he was trying, they didn't like what he was saying. And here, now, these these videos are from people, very, lots of different people filming this and posting it. Um, and it's easy to say, well, yeah, but they're not accredited mainstream news. These are, these are just people that, you know, they could have poured a Mountain Dew in the water and filmed it and said it was something, sure. But is, is that any less reliable than our mainstream news is? You know, right now, they, they're, they're pretty happy to lie. Uh, so, somebody says here, or the, the news, I guess, says here, according to Norfolk Southern Railroad, uh, the, the controlled release process involves the burning of the rail car's chemicals, which will release fumes into the air that can be deadly if inhaled. Based on current weather patterns and the expected flow of the smoke and, and fumes, anyone who may, remains in the red affected area is facing grave danger or death. Anyone who remains in the yellow impacted area at high risk of severe injury, including skin burns and serious lung injury. And the area that they had kind of pointed out here um, I, can I scroll left and right on this? Yes, I can. Okay. Is all right here around West Virginia, Ohio, Columbus, this area down here. Um, let me play the rest of this video here so you guys can see what's going on. And it's right on East, oh, slow down. East Palestine is right uh, just northwest of Pittsburgh, and just uh, southeast of Cleveland. So it's right on the Ohio-Pennsylvania line. Uh, yeah, officials are saying that it, everything's safe, but here's a picture just of fish. Like, they're just done. Frogs, wildlife, uh, birds falling out of the air. Uh, the UAE Exotic Falconry and Finance says they didn't tell anyone it's a five-day evacuation. Oops, all, pet, all their pets are dead. Um, this guy was telling a story about he's got pet foxes and he had foxes outdoors. He started, they started uh, coughing, kind of making coffee noises. They laid down and that was it. Expired animals. Uh, it crapped itself. It threw up and then it died. And then again, here they say that, uh, the, the, they're supposedly reporting that the air quality is fine. Now I know this is just a shotgun of information that somebody put into one video and it's coming from all over the place. I can't tell you how reliable this stuff is. I don't know. But the fact that it's not even making mainstream news and instead they're talking about freaking balloons all over the place and, and that no one's talking about this at all is just pretending like it's not happening. Uh, somebody posted here, eggs before the burn uh, Tuesday, eggs after the burn from Enon Valley. And you can see how they look discolored. Again, I don't know what is and isn't you know how people will virtue signal and try to say that that um, that certain things are real or not. But I mean, a lot of people have a lot of weird videos like this one of crows just freaking out and flying around and then later falling to the ground dead. And that they said this is 10 miles east of Pal uh, Palestine with all the, the birds. Someone went out and tested the water for acidity. Rail companies blocked safety rules before the Ohio Department. And you can see they started the burn in the daytime and here it is still at night, just pumping out all this stuff. Um, this video is from a young person, I think. 
it's a, a woman. I don't, I don't really know anymore. Um, but she lives in the area. I'm going to just let her play her thing and you guys can see what she thinks of the situation. I see so many people talking about the train derailment at East Palestine, Ohio. And all I'm going to ask is that if you do this, you get your facts right. I literally grew up right down the road from East Palestine. Um, my old childhood best friend lives in the f***ing town. Um, my current best friend literally lives right next to the town. It is so much worse than what the media is telling any of us. I'm getting reports from people that are down there right now that they're literally seeing schools of fish floating down streams, rivers, f***ing dead. I got a video from my friend, okay, and she's like walking, dude, it's all f***ing dead. All fucking dead. And on the top of the water is a really pretty chemical rainbow sheen. The chemicals are in the fucking water and they're lying to the rest of the country saying they're not. The water's been contaminated. The soil's been contaminated. The fucking air is contaminated. You literally are about to see some of the worst health side effects coming out of people in that town it's not even funny and y'all want to know something even more fucked up the restaurant that i work at in a whole different state had to donate food to them because we had people from the churches calling to tell us that red cross never fucking came fema never fucking came the environmental con con conservationists still have yet to fucking come and nobody's fucking helping them meaning all of the fucking firefighters that we're working get no food, have nothing to help them, nothing, okay? All the people that were displaced have no food, water, a place to stay, none of that sh**. It is so much worse than what they're telling you, and TikTok probably won't even let me post this video, but if this video gets posted, please save it and repost it everywhere you fucking can, because I'm telling y'all, they are covering this shit up. They are covering this sh**. Hey, she kind of keeps going on in the same thing, but you got the... You got the important uh, news out of that. And this is somebody that's in the area. Uh, so again, if, if any of you are anywhere near there, there and know anything more about this, please let us know. Um, this is, I kind of pinned, so they were talking from Cleveland to Ohio. And uh, right here, this is an interactive uh, stream map. This is the United States USGS. Um, this shows you here that um, if I pin kind of where that town is, you can see that that water. So it's blowing, it's blowing east across Pennsylvania, which means that it will obviously fall here in Pennsylvania, which will head out here to the ocean, right? Because that's going to be east of the of the Smoky Mountains here. But but right where they are, you know, when they talk about these chems. The chemicals, it's going to affect northern West, uh, like West Virginia border, Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana, Illinois, Tennessee, Missouri, Arkansas, Mississippi, um, and Louisiana. This is the outflow of that water. And then if it, it continues to blow, uh, it keeps telling me I have to zoom in a little further to pin stuff. Let me let me cut over to the other side of the Smokies here. And you can see here that if it gets in Pennsylvania, it's going to come out here and come out into Washington, Philly, Maryland. And this is the direction it's blowing. It's it's bad. It's bad. Um but again, I, how bad it is, I don't know, but I just want you guys to know cuz it's not even in the news. And that way if you're in the area, uh, you can, I don't know, I don't know, I guess test some groundwater, keep an eye out on your animals. Because uh, if, if they're not saying anything and this sprinkles down into, you know, they were estimating in this area, there's 75,000 uh, farmers and farms, 75,000 farms. How much of our food is coming from that? How much of this is going to get into the water supply that the animals that do live 
you know, that aren't quite so uh, poison that they die out, uh, is it going to be in the food? Uh, this is from Woke Societies. It says um, that he's reporting the same thing, uh, people getting sick, arrested journalists, uh, mainstream media outlets. And this happened back on February 3rd, and here it's 10 days later, and just now people are starting to say, I mean, they, they have for the last couple of days, but now they're starting saying, wait a minute, this is like it's affecting people's paint on their cars. People are, are having uh, uh, burning chests. Animals are getting sick. Um, and they go into how the, the Norfolk Southern corporations owned by Wall Street billionaires, and they've started to cut safety protocols, and they laid off a large number of their force, and they're not doing the protection of, like they're not certifying the vehicles, you know, the train cars as they should be. Uh, it, so it, and this is from uh, At Woke Societies. So the, uh, interesting read if you want to check that out on, on Twitter as well. And, and what did, what did beat Pete Buttigieg, who is the transportation expert of the United States, he's our federal transportation secretary. Here's what he had to say about the incident. This is, this is the only press conference today. Here's what he had to say. To work with your contractors, uh, to work with your community colleges, on building a workforce that reflects the community. We have heard way too many stories from generations past of infrastructure where you got a neighborhood, often a neighborhood of color that finally sees the project come to them, but everyone in the hard hats on that project looking like, uh, uh, you know, doing, doing the good paying jobs don't look like they came from anywhere near the neighborhood. That's right. He's talking about too many white people in construction. Not kidding. This, this was, this is live. Too many white people in construction. And this is uh, uh, Evan Lambert, and he's being arrested. At, uh, they say breaking Everett Lambert TV, a DC-based correspondent for At News Nation, uh, has been in Ohio covering the train crash. He was doing a live shot in the back of the room during a press conference. Was told to stop by police. Was pushed to the ground, cuffed, and arrested, and put in a patrol car. The charges against him is uh, criminal trespass and disorderly conduct. And they show him his arrest all the way through. He didn't resist. He didn't do anything. He was just there, but they're going to slap charges on him. That's all I have, guys. I don't know what's going on. I thought I'll put this out there just so you can see, you know, so you can be aware of what's going on. So any of you that have any information that can share, that can we, we need to kind of get this going around on, on other types of media because I guess the main, the main outlets just don't care. So there you go. Um, I'll have the other video that I was planning to do out probably this evening, this afternoon or evening. Uh, that's going to be on on uh, how basically damned if you do, damned if you don't, no matter what you do in today's uh, world, trying to either avoid women or be nice to women or whatever. They're going to find a way to blame you for something. So I'll have that one out for you shortly. Thank you.